like keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, yeah. and we're getting ever so close to the draft. So close. And now it's time to decide who are the 49ers going to select at pick 117 of the draft. 117, baby. Yeah. Seven times. It's going to be a big one, because this is. is still really close to the top 100. It's still somebody that's going to could possibly make an impact this season. Well, that's definitely going to be someone, too, that you, you know, it's going to fall. There's going to be guys who fall in this spot, because... Teams are going to value positions over necessarily talent, and not everyone has the same boxes to check in terms of positions and needs. So you're going to, you might get a guy who falls into the spot that's going to fill some roles and fill some niche some niche roles for the 49ers, especially since you got a guy like Jordan Reed who just retired. There might be a tight end available. Who knows? You never know. Yeah, this is really exciting though. And we talked about Brevin Jordan. For pick 102. He will not be there for 117, but one tight end that just could be there is Tommy Trimble from Notre Dame, who happens to be one of my favorite tight ends in the draft. Went over this before because I love the way he blocks. He's great. He's not just an inline blocker, but he can also play the H-back role. He blocks really well in the backfield, which means he could fill in for juice in case of injury. He could do all those type of things. He is Charlie Warner and Ross Dwelly put together right now. He's got the blocking ability of Warner with the route running ability of Dwelly. He needs to improve on his route running, but that's why he's going to make it to 117, and that's why he could be someone in the 49ers target because they do need to fill the void now left by Jordan Reed retiring, and four tight ends is what they've been keeping lately. So this is definitely a possibility, and this is the hotbed where he could go. Definitely is. Um, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see that at all. They could also go with another type of receiving, receiving threat. Jalen Darden still might be available. Um, it's true. But Cornell Powell most likely is going to be the guy that's the name that's there that's going to stick out a lot of people's minds, as well as Simi Fayoko, yeah. I believe that's how you pronounce it, out of Stanford. Uh, both of those targets at wide receiver, talented guys, guys who would fit in the role and the scheme for Kyle Shanahan in the receiving game, could fill a role, could plug and play, maybe could even fit in and fill a niche role like a taking over for Hurd if something happens to Hurd. I think the 49ers are banking on this guy being healthy, though, Jalen Hurd this year. Um, I think the the fact that they haven't cut cut him loose or released him, even despite the fact that he hasn't made it to a single preseason, a regular season game, excuse me, uh, says a lot about what they think his potential could be. Uh, but you might want to hedge your bets, and a guy like Cornell Powell might be a good option here. Right here, 117. Not that too early point. Remember I said don't draft before round four. This is the perfect spot right there on the threshold. You're in that round four selection. There's still plenty of guys left on the board. However, if you wait a little bit longer and wait till I think it's 155 is our next one, yeah. uh, you might not get a guy at the level of a Cornell Powell or a Fayoko. Yeah, the big part is they're just different players too. Powell is going to be the possession receiver that's going to do the dirty work in the middle of the field, convert third downs. Sounds a lot like Kendrick Bourne. I mean, it really is. The one thing I like about this guy is he caught a lot of passes. He was, has very good hands, and so, he has strong so he, hands. He doesn't drop key first down <laughs> passes. He doesn't save it for, like, no. third and shorts and the goal line. He definitely doesn't do that. Does he dance? I don't know. I, I that that I, I'm not too sure. I haven't seen him. Oh, you know, okay. I don't follow him on social media. I don't know. I don't have him on TikTok, none of that. Just, just stay away from TikTok. We'll, but, we'll be all right. But, yeah, he's he's a very solid receiver, and I could see him filling that role. If they're, if they're looking for somebody that could fill the role of, you know, Kendrick Bourne as far as catching those key, you know, plays, playing some power slot, he makes sense because I think he's a good player, and he tested a lot better than I think a lot of people anticipated. Faster, you know, better vertical, all that. That 40 time was impressive. I, I didn't expect that. Yeah. Fioko's, uh semis. 40 time is even more impressive yeah hitting in the four threes at that size is absolutely outstanding um so he's a different type of player and the fact that we have kevin white on the roster still this guy could be what they expect kevin white you know maybe to be is that that really speed receiver with a lot of size this guy could stretch the field down the field and be vertical threat that they don't have yet so if you're looking at someone that could maybe be a home run shot depending on who we draft at the quarterback position you want somebody to be able to get down the field and stretch it, this guy would do it. 
100% could, could add a lot of firepower to that offense, and we all know Kyle Shanahan loves him some speed at the wide receiver position. Yep. Uh, another guy that could be falling down some draft boards and could end up right here in round four, which is kind of crazy to think because for a while we've been talking about this guy as a solidified second round talent, but it seems to be that he is slipping as time goes on here. Quincy Roche, edge rusher. If you don't go edge rusher early, you don't pick up a guy like Aziz Aljawari, or you don't go with another guy early in the first couple of rounds of the draft, you might end up getting a guy like this in round round four. If you don't get a Joe Ty- a try on in round two, round three. Uh, man, are you are you shocked by this, finding this out? I think I am shocked. I think people are kind of doing the same thing they're doing with Aziz is a speed rusher. You know, maybe they, they're pigeonholing him into not being able to play, you know, all three downs and base downs. So they're kind of letting him slip. And I think he's also getting hurt by the fact he played opposite of Jalen Phillips. Doesn't help. No, because Jalen was so good. So automatically they know Roche got, you know, a lot of single blocks and he didn't get double teamed a whole lot. And he was able to get in there with this quick speed. He does lack a little bit of the dip going around, you know, that turn in the corner. Um, but he's still a supreme, supremely good athlete. And at round four, that is great value. The signing of Arden Key also makes it so defensive line is not such a big need for the 49ers. So now you're right. They might not address it early on, and it might come down to rounds four, five, and six. There'll be more guys that we talk about, I'm sure, at 155 as far as edge rush because oh, yeah. you still address it because it's one of those ones that just is, carries so much value. You always want to get an edge rusher. Well, not just that, but we saw what happened when the speed dynamic was off the roster last year. So if you can go get a young guy... That has that doesn't have the speed questions that's got more upside than a Jordan Willis does. It's an upgrade. Yeah. Because if you end up getting into injury purgatory like the Niners did last season, if you have someone that's better than Jordan Willis sitting there behind ready to go, then you're you're in business. You're going to be set. At, you're at least going to be in a position where you're not lost and you've lost your identity completely. Maybe you know what your identity is and you're just not as good at executing it and being who you want to be, but you can still try to do your very best to be a team that uses its pass rush to help cover some of your secondary holes or not even holes but the lack of incredible over the top amazing <laughs> incredible cover skills that our dbs you know it is they haven't had yeah and that's okay because like i said that's kind of what our identity is well and you trust you trust chris Caseric. And if, if he's high on taking this guy, then you trust him because he's going to fit in the wide nine. You've seen the development that happens from these guys. Roche only had one year playing Division One college football. He was a transfer in, so he's still got a lot of development. But in the fourth round, that's where he starts striking on developmental talent that's got this kind of quick twitch and this kind of athletic ability coming off the edge. 100% would be interested in him at 117. I love it when he said quick twitch. There you go. Quick twitch. <laughs> it's nice. Uh couple more guys left that we want to hit on that are kind of bigger names or just positions in need, at least for the 49ers. Benjamin St. Juice, the cornerback, still available at this spot. If, you don't, if you're not able to go out and get a guy like Elijah Molden or you don't hit on a guy like, let's say, Paulson Adebo, who we're very high on in rounds two, rounds three, this is a guy, Benjamin St. Juice, you could bring in, develop, not day one starting ready, but is a guy that you could develop and mold under guys like Jason Verrett, guys like if you go and make a trade for Stephon Gilmore, guys like Emmanuel Mosley, they can all sit there and help kind of mold this guy and get him ready to take over next year when some of their contracts are up. Because you're not going to be able to, you probably won't be able to re sign all of these guys next year because you got still to worry about Bosa's contract coming up, Fred Warner's contract coming up. What are you doing with Greenlaw? There's still a lot of a lot of other questions up in the air. Don't forget Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk coming up in the near future as well. So this is a guy that you can get, you can mold, not going to have to pay a whole lot for the next three or four years, and has a lot of upside. Yeah, I think he's got a similar build to Tim Harris Jr., who they have on the roster. So once again, it's a guy that fits their scheme. He's tall, he's big, he's physical. Originally went to Michigan, you know, and then goes to Minnesota. So it shows that he's got the pedigree to play in a big-time you know, team, big-time conference. He's a good player, and at this spot, he's a very good value. The question is, how much do the 49ers want to rely on a straight cover three style defense, which he fits, or does he, or they want to run more man, which he's not as good at? This is where he's starting to get into those questions. So maybe they should address it earlier in the draft. You know, a Kelvin Joseph, somebody like that, even a Marco Wilson right now would make more sense. And this, if you're going looking to go that direction, it's true. But as far as if you're going to play cover three, and that's what you're mainly concerned with. Because really, Verrett is the main guy that can run man coverage. Other than that, Ed, they're all kind of, Mosley's okay at it. 
So St. Juice would make sense if you're looking to stay in that mold, cover three. In that cover three, yeah. I, I agree with you there. Um, I'm, I'm good with Marco Wilson. You know, the saving grace is that we don't have Kendrick Bourne around to focus with dancing on him and stuff like that. He can yeah. focus on football. Um, you know, just make sure we got some training day videos for him when he comes in. Who throws a shoe honestly? <laughs> just don't do it in San Francisco, and I can forgive the sins of your air and ways in <laughs> Florida, my lord. Uh, last guy that we want to bring up and mention at this spot, an interior offensive lineman of the fighting Illini, Mr. Kendrick Green. Kendrick Green, how are you feeling about this guy, especially at this spot here at round four at pick 117? Yeah, I think this is kind of when you started looking to go interior line, if, especially if you didn't address it in the second round. The second round is kind of the hotbed where you're going to have Landon Dickerson and you know, uh, Wyatt Davis, and even a Creed Humphrey late second, early third. True. Those are guys you're looking at. Now we're starting to get into the range where it's other guys. So at pick 117, he would make sense. He could play, step in, play the guard spot, battle with, you know, Brunskill right now, but give you some flexibility and depth in the interior line. I still don't know if the 49ers are going to go interior line in this draft. I, ha not, I have not convinced. Yeah, I'm not convinced. But if they got to 117, this guy would make sense because he is a gifted player that can play. There are other guys coming down the bend that we're going to be talking about as well, but he's somebody that makes sense. He does make sense. I wouldn't be shocked if to see him do it. But like you said, I'm not convinced that the Niners are thinking O-line. I know a lot of fans are clamoring for it and thinking this is a major need and hole to fill. Uh, but there's still a lot of questions surrounding Richburg. There's just still a lot of questions surrounding guys that are going to be healthy. And in all honesty, the fact that there hasn't really been a lot of conversation on it, it just makes me feel like they know something we don't, and they're not going to rush to judgment and rush to make a decision. Uh, we've seen that Shanahan and, and Lynch, if they're going to go after O-line guys, they tend to go right here in this third to five, rounds three to five, is where they've taken a lot of guys over the last few years. So if there's an area, this would be it. Um, as much as that pains me to say, because I'd love for them to go get a Wyatt Davis in round two, uh, Kendrick Green could be the option right here at pick 117. Yeah, I, th I think the draft is going to really tip one way or the other in round two. What the 49ers decide to do, if they trade up, it's going to change the draft completely. If they stay pat, we're probably going to get an interior defensive lineman or offensive lineman, not defensive lineman. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, offensive lineman. If we go <laughs> defensive lineman, people are going to freak out. What again? Yeah. <laughs> But um, also, they could also trade back and build a little bit more in the top 100, which could happen. So that is going to be the most pivotal spot, 43, and that will trickle down effect to 117. We can't get here soon enough. I know all of you are itching and jumping and just like, come on, can we get to next Thursday already, please? For the love of goodness gracious, we feel you. Patience. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. The good news is, is from now until then, you're going to have a plethora of 49ers cutback content. That's right. Plethora couple of videos a day maybe three videos who knows the only way to know for sure is to subscribe to the page right now hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell that way you get notified every time one of our videos is going to go live you'll get notified as soon as our premieres go up for our videos which are pretty much daily at 11 a.m at this point and since we're going to be releasing video content non-stop you can guarantee pretty much every day from now until next friday when day two of the NFL draft starts, you're going to have a video at 11 a.m. in the morning. You want to be here. You want to see it. You want to participate. You want to enjoy it. Make sure you're here. At 100%, we're going all in on making sure that we get everything covered before the draft. All of it. And we're hoping the 49ers go all in on this draft and are aggressive. And we hope you go all in and subscribe to the channel because we'd like to have you here. And we're building towards 750. We so want to get there before the draft. We're almost there, people. You can help us out. Get us over the top. Share the video. Tell your friends. Make sure they come check out the 49ers Cutback. And make sure that you participate. Let us know what you think about these selections down below. We want to hear from you. You are the lifeblood of this channel. Make sure you let us know what's going on. Stay involved. And until next time, stay safe. And remember the right way is, is always, always the 49ers, 49ers way. way. Always.